Einstein's brain got stolen once, a 26 year old tried to convert tribes to Christianity and died, and a man falls off a financial building trying to show tricks that a window wouldn't break. These are historical facts that make you go, wait, that actually happened? Yeah, there are a lot of crazy things in history that seem fake, but definitely happened. Like how Einstein's brain went missing and it was actually stolen for decades. Apparently in the 19th century, the brains of geniuses were often preserved so that scientists could try to determine the origins of that person's intelligence. Like half of the brain of Charles Babbage, the inventor of the first computing machine, is still on display at London's Royal College for Surgeons. As for Einstein, he placed it in his will to not have scientists examine and study his brain when he died. However, the doctor who did examine him removed his brain for himself, Dr. Thomas Harvey. A pathologist stole Einstein's brain, divided it into 240 pieces, and stored it into two mason jars filled with solution. Einstein's son found out and he was pissed off. He was enraged. Somehow, Dr. Harvey managed to convince the son, but of course there were consequences. He got fired and his wife left him, but he still kept Einstein's brain and stored it. So what was the point of that? Eventually, reporters tracked him and once it was placed into the hands of a medical center in New Jersey, people are still not allowed to see it. But because it was chopped up to 240 pieces, only some were recovered, meaning there are still pieces of Einstein's brain out there. Why? Because Dr. Harvey gave some away to his friends as a present. I don't know about you, but that's pretty messed up. Even if he was the smartest man in the world, it still belongs to him and that was pretty disrespectful of his request. What do you think? Speaking of disrespect, the 26 year old American adventure blogger John Allen Chow wanted to go to the Sintalese tribe located in the Bay of Bengal. Completely aware that this was an untouched tribe, meaning leave them alone. I don't know what is up with people trying to convert people into things, but just leave them alone. Anyways, he was warned multiple times to not, you know, go to them as they do not wish to interact with the outside world and they were very, very happy on their own. Of course, he didn't listen and despite the news of a helicopter being near the area in 2004 and the tribes threw bows and arrows at the machine, John thought to himself, I can convince them. With the power of conviction by my side, I can do anything I want. So he waltzed in casually trying to help the local fisherman and he was attacked viciously when he ran away. But of course, the man with the power of conviction by his side still didn't know when to stop, so he tried to go the next day and eventually he was killed. Lessons be learned there, kids. Just leave people alone. Mind your business. Just like the odd death of Gary Hoy, Gary Hoy was a Canadian lawyer who worked at the 24th floor of the Toronto Dominion Centre building in 1993. This is not a laughing matter, but it is one of my favourite stories. And in this building in particular, the TD building, had windows that were meant to be extremely tough and bulletproof. Gary was a corporate and securities law specialist who was always giving tours to students throughout the building, and during these tours, he would demonstrate the toughness of these windows by running into them on the 24th floor. However, because he's done this so many times on the same window, when he tried to perform the same gimmick to a new tour group, the window popped off and fell from the 24th floor with Gary on it. The most terrifying part is, once he died, it was also noted that the glass still didn't break, proving his point to the tour that the glass was not breakable. All right, I mean, it was breakable. I mean, he, he broke. Uh, either way, the engineer who made the building reported to the Toronto Star saying, I don't know of any building code in the world that would allow a 160 pound man to run up against a glass and withstand it. His death has been so wild and random, it was even given the Darwin Award, a evolution award of people who died in the most spectacular way possible. I guess even in ancient Greece though, even if you were a famous person, your legacy would still be recorded and documented today. No matter how weird your life went, it'll resurface eventually and that's definitely something we need to note when we do stuff on the internet. Uh, so Milo of Kraton was an ancient Greek athlete from the 6th century BCE and was renowned a wrestler of the time. Milo is credited with having led an army to victory over their opponents around 510 BCE and at the time was a 6th time Olympic victor. So what happened? According to the traditional account of his demise, the elderly, he was very old at this point, Milo wanted to see if he still got it and wanted to try to tear a tree apart with his bare hands. Instead, he got stuck in the tree for a very long time until a pack of wolves came and ate him. They found him just by himself. So he died. Benjamin Franklin uh, was the founding father of the United States, was a major figure in the American Enlightenment and the history of physics for his studies of electricity. And even though some of us were taught that he shocked himself by tying a key at the end of a kite, um, when apparently that's not what struck him, he was able to experience some shock of static electricity, but not to the level of lightning strike that we may have seen online. Apparently, he was severely shocked while trying to cook a turkey for dinner. He was studying electricity and felt that if he cook a turkey with electricity, maybe the turkey would cook faster. And it did. Well, he did. He tried to electrocute the turkey turkey but accidentally touched one of the laden jars and got knocked out. When he woke up to his friends shaking him, he had to take a few days off. I mean, at least it taught him that electricity is kind of shocking. Speaking of shocking inventors, Nicholas Tesla, who as we know is an inventor of design and innovation, was fashionable as well. He was a fashionable man who loved wearing white gloves to dinner every night, and he prided himself in being a dapper dresser. However, despite being a man of great minds and great inventions, he had a phobia, and that was pearls. He was afraid of pearls. The tiny moon-like spheres created in the tongues of oysters, he just couldn't stand 
on them. In fact, when women wore them around them, he refused to interact or speak with them. Even his secretary, when she wore jewelry that had pearls on it, he actually sent her home for the day and told her to never wear it again. But it wasn't just pearls either. Any gems or crystals, he just couldn't stand the sight of it, which apparently is a genuine phobia called lithophobia. What about you? Do you have a phobia? If you were bald, you might want to wear a helmet. That's something the ancient Greek tragedian named Aeschylus should have done. This man was one of Greek's greatest writers, and he was always writing something about tragedy in his plays. In fact, he was also known as the father of tragedy, and in some ironic way, even though his fans loved his writing and adored his plays, they would remember him even more so on the weird way he died. Apparently, a hawk had a tortoise in their claws and needed to drop the tortoise onto something hard enough to break the shell so he would eat it. And so when the bird saw the shiny bald head of Aeschylus, they dropped the tortoise from such a height and knocked him over and killed the Greek writer. I guess in some way, that is pretty tragic. In some way, though, when it does come to executions, there are some that are pretty tragic, but some that are pretty weird. At the top of the list is the Russian Tsar, Peter III. At the age of 25, he found that two of his toy soldiers had their heads chewed off, and in a fit of rage, he caught the rat that was responsible. He built a tiny gallows for it and ordered a military hearing, stating that the rat had broke military law. The rat was given a proper court martial and sentenced to be hung by the neck until it died. And of course, there was another court martial of the rat. Not this rat, another one. During the Battle of Somme, British soldiers discovered a rat in their trenches and they believed it was aiding the enemy. The soldiers suspected the rat of stealing and consuming their rations, and the soldiers, frustrated by the perceived actions of the rat, held a court martial in the trenches. They accused the rat of theft and sabotaged a conduct mock trial. Witnesses were also called, and evidence likely relating to the missing rations were presented, and the trial concluded with a guilty verdict and the rat was sentenced to death. The rat was then executed by a firing squad, but the soldiers using their own rifles to shoot the rodent. John Scott Harrison has the rare distinction of being the only person to be the son of a past United States President, William Henry Harrison, and as the father of a future President, Benjamin Harrison. He also has the rare distinction of being a victim of a leather face-like dissection chamber. As a one-time Ohio congressman, John Scott Harrison and his own tenure in politics was very successful, which explains why so many attended his funeral on May 25th, 1878. During the ceremony, mourners noticed that somebody was robbing uh, graves nearby of the grave of Augustus Devon, worried that John Harrison might actually have the same fate. His son placed three large stones bound with cement on the casket. It took 16 men to lift the stones, and as a further precaution, a guard was hired to stand watch for a month. Apparently, there was also a nearby medical school needing corpses for study, and so there was a warrant for the Medical College of Ohio after they found multiple corpses, as they found one with a mask. They removed the mask, revealing to be the face of John Scott Harrison. His body apparently had been robbed less than 24 hours after his burial despite all of the precautions. And finally is the Human Zoo. More than 20 million people attended the 1904 World's Fair and they came to St. Louis to see electricity for the first time and to hear their first telephone and to witness around 30,000 savages from Africa, Asia, and the Americas living in displays that resembled the native villages that they were from. These indigenous men, women, and children were brought to the fair to perform their backward primitive culture for eager dumb American masses who would leave feeling a renewed sense of racial superiority. Those who kidnapped, trafficked, and stole the indigenous people of these countries made a profit of them, and that is really disgusting, and I hate them. The zoo consisted of indigenous people from the Congo, Somalians, Igorot, Moro, Negrito, and Visayans, Sioux, Native Americans, Nubians, Inuit, and China, Japan, and so many more places, as well as tattooed indigenous from Mindanao. Gross part of this fact was that the last human zoo only finally closed in 1958 after the Second World War. In context, you might even have parents or even grandparents that were probably alive at this time. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for joining in. What's your favorite historical fact that not a lot of people know? Comment below. And be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. My name is Jess and I wish you all the best. The Croton Oh wait, the Crotonian Croto Croton Iten Iten? I don't know. He led an army. Um <laughs> He was studying electricity and felt that if he could cook a dinner <laughs> cook a dinner.